Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you are doing great. Before I start today's video, just to let you know that I am creating the playlist of Langchain videos. And in the last video about multi data frame agent, I explained you about the pandas data frame. But the same approach can be applied to Spark data frame as well as CSV. Meaning that you can use multiple Spark data frames as well as multiple CSV to do the same what I did in my last video. One of the viewer asked me to create a video about JSON agent because there is no video related to JSON agent being created. In this video, I will explain you how, what is JSON. Let's say that you are completely new. That's not a problem. We will see what the JSON, JSON file looks like. And we will use JSON loader to load the data as well as use the JSON agent. Let's get started. Okay, what is JSON, right? JSON is the JavaScript object notation. And there are many JSON viewers available online. You can just copy your JSON file if it is not formatted correctly and they will provide you the formatted, formatted format. Okay, that's great, formatted format. And now uh, I will be explaining you in this JSON agent, I will be using the ML file. If you are completely new to this JSON and ML file, that's not a problem because no one is perfect and no one knows everything in the beginning, right? I have created one link here for you, JSON versus ML file. And if you click this link in incognito, it will show you JSON versus ML and their huge cases. This is the link I shared you from the Perplexity AI. I have created the video earlier. It has been that easy. Now you can ask something in the Perplexity AI or some other chat bots and you can share that chat with others. You can go through here and read what is JSON. As it mentioned here, it is JavaScript object notation. ML is at another markup language or now it is it stands for ML and markup language. Yeah, you can go through this. But just to say you that JSON and ML are kind of similar, but ML is super set of JSON. They are easy to read. I will show you how it looks like as we go into the video. Yeah, just go through this document or chat and know more about this file. Now let's go and set up the environment first, right? To set up the environment as we do always, you need to first install the necessary packages and all the necessary things as you can see here if you don't have the open ai api key please refer to this link and just pass it here that then you are good to go and you are good to go and da, da, da. then you are good to go now we can go and see what is json and we will use json data loader as well as json agent for those who have already used JSON and ML, I think this is quite familiar to you what the data looks like, right? But I want to make this video for complete beginners also so that each and every one of you who is watching this video knows what I am presenting, right? Here I am, let me expand this JSON part. I am downloading the Facebook chat.json from the Langchain GitHub repo. You can just run this command. And once that is downloaded, we can read it, right? Here is how I am loading it with the JSON json.loads and I'm passing this particular json file and I'm printing here p print and data and it shows here the json file one thing that you might be wondering why I used p print and why not the print because if you use print it will just show in the same line and it is not that formatted but if you use p print meaning that pretty print it prettifies the output yeah, this is how the JSON looks like. It's key value kind of things here. As you can see here, creation timestamp, it's given here. URI, it's given here. It's kind of key value pair, right? Yeah, this is how the JSON file looks like. There is nothing that you need to think about here. But now let's go and use the JSON loader next. By the way, if you are following my tutorial or if you are going through the Langchain documentation, there are actually many data loaders already, right? I created a video earlier about private GPT or chat with many documents where we use the different document loaders, right? JSON loader is one of those document loaders and the JSON loader uses a specified JQ schema to parse the JSON files. I'm not going through this, but 
you can go through the link and see what is JQ because it uses the JQ Python package. Check this manual for detailed documentation of the JQ syntax because JQ has its own syntax. I'm not going through that right now because this is not the JQ video, but you get the idea. Now I can expand these cells. Here I am actually importing the JSON loader and I'm loading that particular Facebook chat JSON. Why I'm taking the chat jot json is because this is what it is showing in the documentation also and it's kind of good because there is one chat here which says context by sender is user to timestamp is here and there is another chat going on here and so on meaning that we have different documents right we can create a different document out of it here that is what we are doing here we are passing the jq schema here and the text content equals to false. This is what I needed to pass because it was see, go, it was giving some error in the official documentation. You don't see it there. And then here we have data equals to loader dot load. That is how we load the things, right? I hope you are familiar with this because this is similar to what we used to do with other data loader also. Now, yeah, then we print the particular data. We print data. As you can see here, it says page content by metadata and it is showing the source because this is the source it is being taken from and the sequence number is one sequence number is two and so on right so that is great but what if we want to extract more metadata here we don't get the type stamp right if you see here we have this let, let me go to one of the example here there is time stamp also right but we didn't get that and also the sender name is user two did we get here? No, right? Let's get the metadata. So metadata is data behind the data because it's easier if we can extract all the information of the particular file, right? It's quite easy with uh, JSON loader. Here we define a function called metadata function and there is a dictionary and there is dictionary. And the output is also a dictionary. Here you can see the metadata sender name and the metadata timestamp. That is what I said you, right? and record dot get sender name record dot get time stamp ms right then we return it this is what we did what we did before and now we pass this metadata function into this json loader and when we run this we will get here the same output but additional information here you see there is page content is by metadata there is source before also sequence number we had before also and now we have the sender name as well as the time stamp millisecond right that is how we can extract the information from the json file using the json loader now let's go and see about the json agent right agent is designed to interact with large json or dict objects right when it is needed that that might be the question for you right this is useful when you want to answer questions about a json blob that's too large let's say that you have a json object of 5000 uh, rows and you want to extract some information out of it it will take you some time right you need to do keyword sorts or you need to be focused and look all the things right but we can take advantage of json agent in these scenarios the agent is able to iteratively explore the blob to find what it needs to answer the user's question. I will show you one example here. Let's let's go and see the JSON agent. I, I can expand this shell now. What I'm doing here is taking the open AI's open API ML file. By the way, if you are using the CI CD pipelines, I think you know that is uh, ML file being used, right? And in open AI API also, there is the open API ml file i downloaded this file here and now we need to initialize the agent right what to do we need to first import the necessary things here and we open that particular ml file and ml dot load and we load the file and this is just the normal things that we are doing here and there is the json toolkit we are taking the json toolkit and spec as json spec you can see there are chain being happening already we open the file first right with ml.full loader and we provided that data into the json spec and then that json spec is passed into the json toolkit and now we created the agent so here is json agent executor if you just look at this there is the create json agent 
and we pass the large language model we pass the toolkit that we just created and the verbose is true meaning that we want to see what is happening behind the scene right so we want to get some information out of that particular file just to show you that it is quite long file if you can see here this is the file and I, as i said before it is from the open ai open ai open api if you see here how many is here there is actually 3650 lines right but we want to get some specific information out of this particular file how can we get that so we can say json agent dot executor dot run right here is what are the required parameters in the request body to the completion endpoint as you can see here we just ask this simple question and there is actually many things that needs to be done here the first the agent must go through this particular file right let me go to the top there are different hierarchy in the ml file it's easier to read but as it becomes bigger or larger it's difficult to find the exact information right by the way let me open this side by side just to explain how it looks like okay so on the left we have the agent and on the right we have the particular file right we ask the question what are the required parameters in the request body of the completion endpoint right what it does first it says that okay action is json spec list keys and the data right it needs to go in the action input is data observation it finds all the necessary things here right as you can see here there is open ai there is a hierarchy in the ml file and then there is the info and there is some information about the info and there is the servers there is some information about the servers and tags and path and all the different things right so it first finds okay there are different different observations and then it says here i should look at the paths key to see what endpoint exist right if you can see here there is path and there are different endpoints but we asked it to go through the particular endpoint here it finds different endpoints there is the engine endpoints and if you scroll little bit down there is this engines engine id endpoint and all the different things it went all the different endpoints right and then it says here i should look at the completion endpoint that is how we also look when we explore the data right then it went and find the completion endpoint okay it went here now and then it says here that okay i am in the completion endpoint i should look at the post key to see what parameters are required right then it went to path completions and post as you can see here this is the completions and this is the post here right and after that it will go through all the different steps as you can see here it says i it needs to go to the request body and then it needs to go to the required content applications and all the different things and one thing way what it gets more interesting is let me just go to this page here right it it went through all the different things right with the with the div with the different different points or different steps in this completion endpoint at at point it says that okay now it needs to go to the components endpoint to find the particular answer now from completions it goes to the components endpoint if we scroll down we should see the component endpoint as you can see for us it takes some time right we need to scroll or we we can do the keyword sorts but let me just scroll here and let me go to the components endpoint where is the components endpoint files classifications and fine tunes i'm not still there i hope i will be there soon no models models moderations yeah components as you can see here it took me some time right and now it says it needs to go to the components and inside the components it needs to okay i don't want to open this it needs to go to the schema because that is the next level here right and then it needs to go to the create completions request so inside the schema it needs to go to the create completion request as you can see here there are many different components right and then after that also it went through that and it needs to go to the type properties and required you see here there is data components schemas create components and the required here create components and there are different other layers also here and it needs to go to the required right and it went all the way down 
in the create completion it is create completion request and it went down here there is suffix there is other many things here there is temperature all the different things for the model right and it needs to go all the way down here and there is this required right sorry and okay there was there was the required and then there was the model right yeah that is how it went all the way down to the required and find the answer model and it says that okay the required parameters in the request body to the completions in point are model you get the idea if we just want to scan the ml file it will take some time for us to go through back and forth each and every steps but this is when the agent plays into action let's say that you have uh, log files and something happened in your system and you get a log message that okay something happens right so instead of going through each and every step by yourself what you can do here is fire up a agent and it will do the task for you and asking the question is also quite easy because you can just copy paste or you can just formulate your random natural language question and pass it to the agent and agent will do all the task for you yeah i hope you find it really helpful and i really find it helpful because just to navigate through these 3000 lines is not that much if you compare to the log files because there will be thousands of other log lines in the log files right so yeah let me know in the comment section if you were able to utilize this json agent in one of your use cases i hope you like this video if yes and if you are new to this channel please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already thank you for watching and see you in the next video